All right, so I got steering box all sandblasted, cleaned up, and painted. So now I'm going to start putting it together. And one thing, the bushings in here that I pulled out, I could not find a suitable replacement. The ones I have are not too bad, so I'm just going to reuse them. I hate to do that, but if you can't get parts, you can't get parts. So... These are going back in. The one thing I am doing is the one that was on the inner edge here or towards the center, which is this one actually looked a little bit better than the one on the outside, so I am swapping them. But other than that, they're just going back in. The bushing that is out here on the side, I was able to get brand new. So I'll put the number at the bottom of the video for that guy for you. So this one's available, these are not. And before I get too going into it, I'm gonna follow the manual pretty close. This is not the first step in the manual, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So I've already reinstalled one bushing, now I'm just gonna reinstall the other. This bushing, I'm going to install flush in here to the edge. The one on the inside is actually down about eighth of an inch. And I think that's to clear our thrust washer, which, you know, as I said, there was supposed to be a thrust washer on the side of our sector, and I could not find it because of that grease. However, once I started cleaning, I did find it. Speaking of that grease, one thing else while I'm on that subject. I was able to get out the lash adjuster. And I made a comment about this upper bearing not getting greased. If you use grease instead of oil, well, this bearing was not greased. And it actually has wore this lash adjuster. And I was also unable to find this piece. So I'm going to have to reuse it. This lower bearing fits nice and tight. This upper one I can push in and out with my hand. I don't know how much of an issue that's going to be, but I am going to try and just lock tight that race in here just to kind of give it a little more holding power. But I'll talk about that a little bit whenever I get to that point. So now that I have those two bushings installed, I'm going to go ahead and put the seal in. The seal that I'm going to install on this is a national seal. Number is 472-287. Let's see, this seal has paint. And we got paint here, so... I'm not really going to put any RTV on it. Right, let's get this seal up here. Okay, well that's flush, but I want to go in just a little bit more. And this box does not have a felt seal protector on it. I'm not sure exactly why, but it does not exist. So there's no need to worry about that. I'm just going to knock this thing in to the bottom of that little chamfer right in there, which is about 16th, 8th of an inch. Okay, so there's that installed. I ended up having to go a little further than I wanted because my tool didn't drive it straight. Make sure it's still good. Yeah, should be okay. Pretty much anywhere if you go flushed a little bit below, you're fine. Because that's fully installed with thrust washer and everything, and it's still plenty good and clear. So you can kind of see it right there. See how much space is there. So you can go a little further if you need to. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so those are kind of the only two steps I'm going to do outside of the manual process. 
which technically if you were to buy this housing brand new from a dealership back in the day you would have bushings installed anyway so it's kind of the first step the seal I kind of did outside of order so step one in the manual is actually installing our upper bushing this bushing came with grease in it however it didn't sound the best so I cleaned mine all out with brake cleaner and I put some Lucas Oil red and tacky grease in it and it made it sound a lot better Plus, it'll probably hold a little bit better. But this is the first part we're actually going to install. And it just goes into the very top of our steering box. It's pretty self explanatory. Stick it in there. Just tap it down until it's flush. And there we go. And like I say, step two in the manual is now install those bushings. Now the next step is going to be to install the lash adjuster. And the manual wants you to install the adjuster, the bearings, and the shaft all at one time. I'm going to do mine separately. And that's kind of because I've had to work on this piece. Since these people put grease in this box for so long and it destroyed this upper bearing this race was actually spinning in this aluminum adjuster and it wallered out this hole to where this race was spinning and I'm not the best aluminum welder or brazier or anything of that nature you can kind of tell because I've melted a lot of it However, I was able to build this up just a little bit and grind it down to get that race to actually stay put. So, that's great on that aspect. As for these races, and the bearings for that matter, this box actually uses bearings off of a 9N tractor instead of an actual 4000 or 800 or even an 8N. So the bearings that you're going to need for the races themselves, the Timken number is 6. That's what it says, it's 6. So that's your race. The bearing themselves is a 5BC. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and put this adjuster up into the casting. Now when you install this be sure that your opening here see how this is cut off? Be sure that this cutoff part is towards the center. And it's basically just going to slide up in there Mine's, mine's a little tight because I had to work on it some. But the good thing about it being tight, the bearings should spin and not, not the lash adjuster. Okay. There's that adjuster up in there. Now I'm going to take the shaft and go ahead and slide one of the bearings on. And I am assembling all this stuff dry. Because once I fill it up with oil, it'll get lubricated anyway. And that's going to be something I do as soon as I bolt this back to the tractor. So we're going to slide that bearing on. We're going to slide it up from the bottom. All the way up. Ow. And up through our upper bearing. And I'm going to go ahead and put a nut on it just to kind of keep it from falling all the way out. I'm going to go ahead now and stick the next bearing and race up into the lash adjuster and onto the shaft. And I'm going to take and just lay it down 
just simply so it doesn't come flying out of the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is going to be the latch adjuster on the bottom. This thing's a little weird to me. Okay, so we have this plate and this gasket. So that'll seal this plate to the bottom. But the problem is, what seals our lash adjuster to the plate and to this? Because you're gonna, it's gonna weep all around it. It says the 55 and 56 get an O-ring down here, and the parts mount shows like a packing. But it doesn't really specify what. So I'm going to come up with something to kind of seal this up because I don't want mine leaking. And I'll pretty much figure it out as I go. But we're going to basically go ahead and assemble this as so. And I am going to take on the actual threaded adjuster. And I'm going to put some pipe dope on here to seal this up. Now, this is not a step that is specified. This is something I'm just doing to try and seal up the bottom of this steering box the best that I can. Because when I took this apart, this entire assembly was covered in a dust and grease mess. Alright, so, so far I have the gasket, the splined adjuster, and the actual screw. And that's all I'm gonna put on there just for the minute. There are some other parts, but I'm gonna do them in a second. The next part I'm gonna put in is gonna be our thrust washer. This button side is gonna go towards our adjuster. So I'm gonna go ahead now and stick this up here. And to get my splines lined up. One thing, on this lash adjuster, the sleeve, which I kind of figured mine would stay put, however I just moved it. On this adjuster here, we have these splines. I figured mine would stay in place, but it moved. But this spline right here needs to kind of be on this side of the bolt. So I'm going to have to move or spin that to get that back up there. That's spun it with a screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and get these bolts put in and ran up. And the bolt in this lower, like you're staring at here, this lower right hand corner, one of these bolts is about an eighth of an inch longer. That bolt needs to go in that hole. Because that bolt holds our adjuster plate. So these bolts here, these three, we can go ahead and snug down. However, this bolt down here, we still won't lift loose. And we're going to take this plate and we're going to install it with the bevel facing outwards. Like I said, I'm probably going to come in here and put something on here, like a cork gasket material or an o-ring or something because I think that should be sealed up. See as far as the torque spec on these I would say probably 20 to 25. I don't see one called out in the book. Being a 5 16 bolt that's typically the kind of torque spec you or torque you'd put on those bolts. And you say this bolt here I'm just gonna run up just fingers tight and leave it. Alright so I got those torqued down. I just took and made a little eighth inch cork rubber o-ring. I'm going to stick on the bottom of this, but I'm going to wait until I get this thing adjusted before I stick this on there. Just for the simple fact this is not called for. So it may mess up some of my adjustment measurements. So I'm just going to leave it off for time being. I'm going to go ahead and stick this plate back on it. I'm just kind of run that bolt up there a little snug. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the lock nut back on. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down 
just to seat that spline adjuster. Okay, and I have that just tight enough just to like pull that sleeve adjuster down. So I'm going to loosen it so I'll be able to adjust it. Now on this slot here, the manual wants us to have this bolt right in the middle of this slot. Which I kind of can't get it there, but eventually it's going to want 3 16 inch there. And that's to compensate for wear and backlash and everything, which just may or may not move, we'll see. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this thing back over. And you can hear how much plays in my bearings at the moment. All right, so back up top here, we're gonna go ahead and install a new spring. A new seal felt and a new spring seat. It's right there. These three parts, along with this bushing up here, are pretty much the only parts on this entire column that interchange with a 600 800 style column. I think the one of the bushings might be the same, but the pitman arm seal is different. And all this lash adjusting stuff is different. The bearings are different. So keep all that in mind whenever you're getting your parts. Alright, so first thing we're gonna do is install the seat. And it's gonna install the little flange facing up with our spring on top. Then we have this little felt seal that goes over top of everything. Which I'll be honest, it's kind of easier to stick these into the steering wheel. I'm gonna actually just go ahead and just take this off of mine because I haven't refurbished my steering wheel yet. I still have to repaint the center spokes because they're a little rusted. So I'm just gonna leave this off for now, but don't forget to put this little guy back on there before you put your steering wheel on during final assembly. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take our steering wheel and get it set up here. And we're gonna go ahead and get this tightened down a little bit. And this don't have to be 100% tight or anything, but you do need all of the slack out of it. And it spins pretty good. However, we're probably still not in the correct spec just yet. So now we need our spring scale. This step, the way it's wording is really confusing. And the reason being, you know, we have infinite degrees in which to turn our steering wheel right now. But the manual says preload should be between four and a half to nine inch pounds with the steering shaft position three turns to right or left of straight ahead position. This is equivalent to five to 10 pounds pull when checked as shown in the, our figures. Adjust the preload by turning screwed way down here on the bottom. Well, three turns left or right doesn't matter. Because we don't have a limitation right now. So what I'm going to do is just take my rope, which the book manual actually calls for twine here, but this is still from where I redid the transmission. Now obviously, if I try to pull this thing right now, it's not even going to register on my gauge. So, I'm going to come back down here to this big bolt. I'm going to take just a flathead screwdriver and turn the big bolt. Start putting some pressure on these bearings. 
Let's see here. I'm at two right now. Okay, so there's mine. I'm, I'm getting a pull of about four or five. See, as you see now, there's drag, which is what you want, because you don't want this just to free spin. So this box doesn't have it, but however, like on your 8N and your 100 series, like your 6 and your 8, your 01s and all those, your utility type tractors, I guess is what I should say, really, you'll have four bolts right in this area with a square plate. Well, on that plate is shims, and that preload your your worm gear bearings in here. And since this column does not have a separate upper tube assembly, you have this adjuster down here at the bottom to set your preload. So now, let's go back down here. So now, I'm going to pull mine back off. And what's important here is to try to keep this preload adjuster from moving which mine actually worked out great and I'm going to pull this plate off and I'm going to stick that cork rubber gasket in here now and who knows this may not do a dang thing it may seal it up I don't know and then we'll put a plate back on it But basically I'm going to go put that on there. So I got to do a little bit of tweaking here real quick. And then once I get that on there, I'm just going to double check and make sure that my preload is still where I want it. Okay, so yeah, use the uh, 16th inch cork rubber for that instead of the 8th inch. You should be fine. We'll put this bolt here on. For it holds our lock plate and we'll go ahead and just torque it down now. Okay, so now that I have that done... I got that bolt torqued for the plate. I'm going to go ahead now and snug down this big nut. Now here's the problem that you're going to run into, that I'm running into. Once you finally start to torque it, it's going to try and twist your adjustment out of spec. Because it just twisted mine tighter. I'm just going to use some channel locks. To tighten this nut up while holding the slotted adjuster. And that, that just needs to be good and snug. See my wheel is still turning. So let me just double check the pull. It had a breakaway of about four and then a constant of about three. So it might be a little loose, but I'm gonna leave it at that. There's the column part in, the actual steering shaft. So now my next step is gonna to be to actually center the shaft. Now to do that, I gotta look in here at this worm gear. And on the ends of it, I want it to be equal distance from the ends of our lash adjuster. And it's just an eyeball measurement. That's all there is. So mine looks pretty good there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install the sector gear. Now be sure you put your thrush washer on it with the little flange towards your splines. Let me see here. I need to put some kind of grease on this to lube it. 
because we're going to have to spin this and get a preload. And the reason I'm going to lube these is because they're in bushings, not bearings. Which that is one thing, not having grease on these bearings will kind of make them a little tighter. However, as you saw on my pull, I'm at the bottom end of the spec. So, mine will probably be a little too loose, but I'm okay with it because I can easily come down here and readjust this once it's back on the tractor. If it feels too loose, I'll just tighten it just a little bit more. And so I'm just going to take just some assembly lube. But you can use gear lube if you want to. I don't currently have the gear lube I'm going to put in here. Up here at the moment, it's down in the chicken house with the tractor. So I'm going to use, just use this assembly lube. And I'm also going to put a little bit of lube out here where the sill will ride. Just so the sill is not dry. And so now... Whenever you install this, we have seven teeth on this gear. So tooth number four here needs to be in the center of your worm gear. If not, you're going to have limited steering. There's that dead center. I need to put a new bushing into the side cover. Now this bushing, I believe you can drive all the way until it stops. Dumb A me, didn't look at it when I took it out. But I think you have enough area here that as long as it's in the housing at least flush you're okay so mine's just a little little bit underneath and i'm gonna run it at that and we got a new gasket and this gasket i just made it's from some ten thousandths gasket paper the same material I actually used up here these are probably available from new holland but I figured I'd take a challenge and make one myself. I'm pretty happy with the results. Put some more lube right here on the side of the sector gear. And then we'll install our side cover. I brought it with me but the bolt that goes down here gets a wire connector put on it and yeah I did not bring that one with me like a dummy so I'll have to get it whenever I got it back on the tractor but these do get lock washers so these are 3 8 bolts they could probably be torqued 25 to 30 and you'll be okay I'll probably do 25 is showing them these okay so there's our side cover so now it's time to do the adjuster here this adjuster is similar to the one on the bottom however you have a little packing which is basically a fancy word for a gasket the last time that I tried to buy a set of these for the 8N, I think these things were something ridiculous, like 20 some dollars for one of these. I mean, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I remember it was ridiculous for what it was. So, I just made this one out of some 16th gasket material. And it'll go in that little hole. However, since it's not perfect, we'll add some thread sealant. But I am going to go ahead and just stick it, the adjuster down in here first to kind of get an idea of where my sealer needs to be. 
And all this is is just a measure just to try to keep leaks at a minimum. I swear no matter how many times you do these boxes and clean them up and stuff, they all leak. Alright, so I just threaded this in enough to where it bottomed against the edge of our sector gear. So now I'm going to go ahead and spiral on my little cork piece. So I can just kind of push it down into the groove. Just try to keep that straight. It's pretty much impossible, but just try. I'm going to go ahead and put the washer on it and the lock nut. I'm just going to kind of snug them down just a little bit. Alright, so to adjust this, you want you to have the pitman arm on here and basically use it as leverage to eliminate any end play in this shaft. So I have my pitman arm over here all nicely painted and ready to go. Kind of hoping I can put it on here in the wrong direction. Yep. So there's no perceivable in play. Which means to me, tighten that up until you can't push it in and out. Which is basically bottoming this against your sector gear and you should be fine so once you get that adjuster right there just to kind of touch that's all you need to do and then just snug down the nut so now we're going to fix the steering gear backlash which is how much play there is between the time you turn the steering wheel and it starts moving the arm. And if you hold your pitman arm and wiggle your steering wheel, you'll hear the backlash and probably be able to feel it. Which I can tell you on mine, looking at the little ribs on the steering wheel, I have maybe half a rib at the most of backlash. I'm going to try mine without adjusting it first, but if I have to adjust it, I have to loosen the bolt that holds this lock plate. And then I'm going to have to turn this plate clockwise to tighten it, or counterclockwise if I need to loosen it. But I have a feeling that since mine is kind of back in the original location, everything's going to be fine. It says now to put the pull scale on its on the steering wheel in its tightest location which for me if I'm turning all the way to the right half a turn off of that is a tight spot so I'm basically going to take my steering wheel and turn it all the way to the right and put the scale on it and then pull it and we want a pull of 16 to 26 pounds which to me seems extremely tight okay so let me pull it and see where I'm at now so I'm about 14 except for in that really tight spot I'm not really sure what that tight spot is all about there because that's the only place I have that everywhere else feels pretty good Who knows when I'm on the tractor, I might not even notice it. I don't know. So, we're going to just assume that this thing has a pull of about 14 pounds, which is a little low, but I think I'll be okay. So, I'm going to leave all this alone. But that's pretty much the box rebuilt. A couple other things I'm going to go ahead and do while I've got it here. I'm going to go ahead and put my terminal block on up here and get the bolts in for the regulator. Regulator is in the chicken house at the moment. And it's a Napa one. It's one of the ones, few ones that are still made in the USA. But let me get the bolts and stuff for this and I'll explain a little bit why I'm doing it at the time. These clips 
These are the originals. And they were rusted, and I just took them off and replated them. If these clips are missing, you can get the 8 in air intake hardware kits from Dennis Carpenter. They have the right style clips. However, the bolts were different. And since these bolts here matched the ones from my terminal block, I figured these are probably the original ones. So I just sandblasted these and replated them. Now, the Carpenter clips, these are black. And these had a zinc finish on them where the regulator was setting. So I just re -zinc made them zinc. But anyway, these just will slide on here. And unfortunately, it knocks paint off, but yeah, it is what it is. I'm just going to thread the bolts in there for now. And then whenever I get the regulator ready to go on here, it's just a matter of simple bolting it on and we're done. The terminal blocks. The original terminal block was metal. Or had a metal plate and a phenolic center. Or, or not phenolic, uh, Bakelite center, I would assume. These new reproduction ones are all plastic. These are the same for the 8N all the way up through at least the 64. You can buy new hardware for them. They're a little different. They're like a self-threading machine screw. But they will work just fine. And this thing is just going to bolt right up here. Hello. <laughs> Screwdriver's a little uh, pissed at me right now. Yeah, there, there goes the GoPro turning off, so we're stuck with just this angle for the moment. So now, the steering box is now ready to go back down to the tractor and be installed. And then I'll get oil put in, which goes right there. Just fill it up until it comes out, basically. And keep in mind that this upper bearing is setting right in this area. So be sure you get enough oil in there to cover this bearing. Otherwise, you'll burn it up, melt everything like somebody did with this one. So, on to the tractor. Alright, I just want to throw this on here as a quick update since I didn't really film anything for the rear tires. Mainly just due to liability issues. But as you can see, the rear rims and tires and wheels all got sandblasted and painted. And installed and tractor sitting back on the ground now. Let's see here. Now as for the actual wheels, I painted them with some silver from Case New Holland. I think it is actually a case color. They turned out really nice. The centers are the 8 inch style gray, which should be correct for this tractor as well. And then all of the rim clamps 
and bolts are zinc plated. And right now at the moment, the tires have just air in them. They will probably stay that way. If I have traction issues, I might try to find a set of pie weights to put on here. And one of the other steps I've done was I went and touched up all my bolts on the front end. With the exception of those right there on the steering arms because I'm not 100% happy with them. So I'm going to tweak on them some. That's just a quick little update on here. I'm going to throw on the end of one of these videos. So now I'm getting ready to put the steering box on it. Okay, so now the steering box is rebuilt. We're going to go ahead and install it onto the tractor and get it bolted down. The manual says to put a gasket here. I don't think a gasket's necessary on this transmission being the 5 speed. On the selecto speed, yes, because there are transmission components up here, but on this, I think you're okay. Because the only thing in here is the clutch. We have these two dial pins. That's going to align our steering column or our steering gearbox, whatever. And then we're going to bolt it down. Gonna lift this up and set her on. Sure went on a whole lot easier than it came off. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go back and check it. It's one of my disassemblies. I'll link it in the description. And I'm gonna just torque them down to 45 foot pounds. And these do not get any washers. Okay, so there's our steering column bolted down. I'm gonna go ahead and go get a wire clamp and throw over here on this side. That way I can come in here with a paintbrush and touch up all these bolts and make them all blue. And I have no idea why this is coppery color. Out of all the tractors I've done, this is the only one that's been like that. It's cool looking, but I don't know what the point of it is. So I'm going to put some 85-140 gear oil in here. This is some of the thickest gear oil I could find. So you pull off this plug on top and you just fill it up until it's pretty much coming out the top. And to not bore you with me sitting here doing this, this is pretty much where I'm going to end this video. Guys, I don't know when I'm going to get around to editing this video, but it's late February right now. And it's probably about 30 degrees out here in the chicken house, so 80 weight gear oil is going to move extremely slow. But... Thank you for watching, and hopefully you can rebuild your steering box now.